simply can't afford to lose if they're to preserve first division status and it's a great testimony to the East Enders that for the third time in five days they've come here in their droves to Upton Park to see if the Hammers can go closer to winning what would be their first ever title Alvin Martin was named in the England 22 for Mexico on Monday he admits the team is tired after playing so many games recently but believes the crowd can lift them to another victory tonight Mark Ward passed a late test on a groin strain, so the side is unchanged from that which beat Manchester City on Monday. Terry Butcher is also in Bobby Robson's squad, shortly bound for sunnier climbs, and the England centre-half will be hoping tonight to score for the third game in a row after his efforts for England and Ipswich last week. And this Ipswich side has scored only 31 league goals all season. That's the principal reason they still need four points to be sure of staying up. Referee Gerald Ashby from Worcester tells me something of a collector of football league grounds. He's officiated on many of them in the league, but this is a debut for him at Upton Park tonight. And there's a really pulsating atmosphere here for West Ham's last home game of what has been a memorable season for them. They've never ever finished higher than sixth in the first division, and they're still in with a chance of the title with just three games to go. Well, John Lyle, the West Ham manager, says uh, that he's just delighted that his team are in this position coming to the end of a season. It's something they've not enjoyed for a long, long time. And now the forwards are supplemented by Martin and by Dickens. They're all up there in the box, ready for the cross if it comes in. And in there is Martin, now McAvenny cuts it back, fine catch. When Alvin Martin made that very clever little knock-on, Frank McAvenny put in the cross, and Cooper, what a good catch. Brennan. Well, Gale's not too sure where the ball is. Oh, and that was very good marking indeed by Dickens, because the ball could well have fallen handily for Jason Dezel then. Free kick against Butcher for the push on McAvenny. Gerald Ashby, he's got a real brummy accent. As he comes from Worcester, it's not surprising. And the lights have come on. They worked out to Dizelle and Parkin had made a run ahead of Devonshire but the ball came instead to Terry Butcher who's got Cole moving down there Paris does tremendously well Devonshire oh that's a lovely ball from Devonshire Cotty he's only got McAvenny in support he's slipped his man gets the cross in Butcher calm and cool that is why Terry Butcher is going to Mexico the applause rings round Upton Park. It was good attacking play by West Ham, but a very solid defensive work by Terry Butcher. This is Dickens, and this is Ord. Now Devonshire's wide out right, uh, out left, and that's exactly where he receives now. spin on the ball kept it in play so Devonshire was he tripped the crowd certainly thought he was the referee would have none of it Cole and Paris set off in sprint together and Paris wins once more he gets the ball back now see what he can do with it says uh, Phil Parks good ball down the line Devonshire fights off Parkin Ward is calling for it outright and gets it. Now having called for it, Mark Ward has got to do something with it. Oh, brilliantly done. Great play from Ward. McAvenny! So close to number 28. They liked it. They'd have liked it even better if it had ended up in the net. But from the moment Alan Devonshire picked out Mark Ward, Ipswich were in trouble here. Ward showing his skills, 
tricking one and then two players and hitting in the perfect cross and as Machiavelli leaps it looks a goal all over and that's how close he is and that's it for the first half so referee Ashby singles the teams to the dressing room the best chance of the half fell to Frank Machiavelli he wasn't able to take it though and that is why at the end of 45 minutes the scoreline remains West Ham United nil Ipswich nil We move into the last 45 minutes of First Division football at Upton Park for another season. And whatever happens, I think we're in for a rousing finale. Perhaps Alan Devonshire can get something going straight away. This is out though, and Gleghorn down the middle for Wilson. And as ever, it's the dependable Tony Gale who's there. Now Ray Stewart, oh, lovely ball to Dickens, McAvenny. Here's McAvenny, he's going to be offside though, he's offside. Then he looks cheated. It was a lovely move. It came to naught. At the moment, these for Ipswich as Brennan tries to find Parkin. Might yet win the ball from Paris all he did do in the end was give away a free kick so Devonshire hair flowing sets off down that left hand touch line again oh lovely touch from Machiavelli here's Dickens oh Dickens is still there oh that would have been one of the great goals of the season but uh, in any case the whistle had gone and the referee right on the job had spotted a handball by Dickens nonetheless merits that applause there was Dickens careering through the ball actually coming off Cooper's chest and the ball bobbled away then from Stewart and Wilson has made a run down the middle oh and Martin makes the mistake and Wilson for surely score now he has to score disaster for West Ham personal tragedy for Alvin Martin and Kevin Wilson who hasn't scored a goal in the last nine matches gets one now for Ipswich which could keep them in the first division and deny West Ham their chance of the title 1-0 to Ipswich and we're in for a frantic last 25 minutes Ward. They have to uh, try all his tricks now. Cole oh, almost happy to kick that one anywhere. Well, that is a real setback for West Ham. They've had most of the pressure, but there has been the warning there all night that Ipswich might just catch them on the break. Leghorn down the middle, here's Wilson again, could it be number two? Parks had to go right outside his area and West Ham are in a bit of a mess at the back at the moment. Because they're over committing themselves, West Ham are running a considerable risk of giving away another goal. They're looking for one now, McIverney butchers the man in front of him, he comes inside, hits left foot, his shot! Super save! McAvenny did everything right there and the shot was a stinger and Cooper's save was tremendous well McAvenny took on Butcher to start with he can cut back inside and right on the edge of the area hitting a real pile driver and Cooper just managed to flick it over Dickens good solid header sets Goddard going Devonshire Almost trod on the ball, still kept control. Finds McIverney trying to play the one-two with Dickens. What a beauty! They're back in it now. And Alan Dickens has not scored a goal since January. 
That's 20 matches ago. But what a crucial time for him to get this one. Devonshire first of all, then McEvaney. And isn't that a cracker? West Ham won, Ipswich won, and we've got a terrific last 15 minutes on hand. Now Wilson, the Ipswich goal scorer, sets off again, and once more the threat to West Ham. Far side is Cole, who will receive it now, and in the middle, Giselle! Oh my goodness! A few West Ham hearts were in their mouths there. What tense moments these are for the West Ham manager. But what a great job he's done here at West Ham. He certainly has repaid the club's loyalty to him. Ward receiving wide as he's done so many times tonight. Cuts inside, keeps control. Takes on two players, takes on three, still goes inside the area and wins it back yet again and still Ward. Oh, it's a penalty! Ward is brought down and he really teased them into that one. Mark Ward showing great tenacity and as Gleghorn and Brennan come across, he twists back inside and there was always a danger of giving away the penalty and it was given against Gleghorn. Ray Stewart, who scored his 50th goal in the league for West Ham with a penalty and won the points against Manchester City on Monday. Can do it again here against Ipswich. The title is still alive. Stewart almost never fails from the spot. And he certainly picked his moment to crack in number 51 and his ninth of the season. He hits them so hard, they go like bullets. And Cooper certainly couldn't stop that. I swear, the crowd almost sucked it in. It's West Ham 2, Ipswich 1, and we've only two minutes to play. Well, the ups and downs in the life of a football manager really reflected in the face of John Lyle. 25 minutes ago, he was exasperated. His side were trailing 1-0. Now he's still not yet relieved, but they do lead 2-1. West Ham have the chance now. If the scoreline stays as it is, that's it! The referee points to the tunnel. West Ham have really snatched the victory here from the jaws of defeat. Alvin Martin's mistake letting Kevin Wilson for a shocking opening goal for Ipswich Town. West Ham had only 25 minutes in which to do something about it. They responded magnificently. Alan Dickens chipped an equaliser. And three minutes from the end, a trip by Gleghorn and Mark Ward in the penalty area enabled Ray Stewart to whack in the winner, which keeps West Ham firmly in the hunt for the title. Here at Upton Park, delirious scenes, because the final score is West Ham United 2, Ipswich Town 1.